See the gun shaking from here. Yeah. Well, the good thing about it, he didn't hurt them. No. no. They have no idea what's going on. That was two two-year-olds and four jigs. That wasn't the big turkey that we saw of them. I'd rather him just run off than go flopping off. Good lesson number one. You always be ready. Yeah. What we've got is probably 25 to 30 year old pine stand and we need to get some fire in it. We've got enough sunlight coming down on the ground but we need to remove some of this duff, this litter layer right before turkey season. We've got good roads around two sides. Howard just took the tractor and a disc and cut a good fire break down through here. It's gonna serve a couple of purposes. There's a fire break right now. We're gonna bring the Furminator back in this fall. We'll put some Durana clover on it then we'll have a permanent green fire break where we can burn on the other side of it next year. When you undertake a prescribed fire, the first thing that you need to do, get your fire breaks in good shape and get a burn permit. You have to call the Forestry Commission and get a burn permit where they will know if someone sees smoke, they've got in their records that, yep, this is a prescribed fire, we know about it, we've got everything under control. So get your fire breaks in order first, then get a burn permit, then you can start talking about burning. Hello, this is Howard O'Neill, and I need to get a burn permit for today, please. You want about a three to one mixture of diesel to gas, one part gas, three parts diesel. The oil from the diesel makes it stick to the vegetation, and the gas makes it a little more flammable. 
you don't want to get it too rich because it'll flame up on you. So about three to one is all you need. The reason fire is so effective in these mid-rotation pines is if you look at this area right here, right along the edge of the road, and you can see that sunlight has created a growth. And you've got a bunch of sweet gums that have come in. That's why they sprayed the arsenal. That sweet gum skeleton is dead. You notice it's got honeysuckle growing up on it. And if you look down here on the ground, You've got little bitty pine seedlings everywhere, just hundreds of them that are competing for the quality wildlife food. So without taking this litter layer off, you're growing food, but you're not growing as much or as high quality as you would if you look right here across the road. This is where we burn. Look at that, nice and clean. All it did was just chew up that litter layer. Now we've got good soil exposed. When it rains, you're going to have these little soil spots all out through here. And the native seed that are already in this seed bed, blackberry, dewberry, honeysuckle, greenbriar, all different types of native grasses and forbs are going to come up through here because you've got sunlight, and now you've removed this litter layer with a soil disturbance of a fire and you're going to create tons of food. Turkeys will be in here probably this afternoon. After it rains, everything greens up. This is going to be absolutely phenomenal. You know, when used properly, fire is probably the most cost-effective and efficient way to manage for wildlife. For very little money per acre, putting fire breaks in, a little bit of diesel fuel in your time, you can make a tremendous impact on the amount of food for deer, turkeys, quail, rabbits, the whole gamut of species under these pine stands take sunlight and soil disturbance to grow native food. Did a timber thinning about two years ago. The following year came in with helicopters and did an arsenal application to take out all of the undesirable hardwood, sweet gums and things like that. So we've got a bunch of dead skeletons in here. Now come in with a cool dormant season fire. It's going to clean the ground up remove some of that thatch, expose the dirt. The turkeys are going to love it. We've got the, uh, the Conservation and Natural Resources Foundation that's hosting the governor's one-shot turkey hunt in about 10 days. It's gonna rain for five days and get in the 70s. There's gonna be little green buds about this tall all through here during that hunt. You got food plot, food plot, food plot, roads, and burned in a triangle right here in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and hedge my bet. Allen Howard's gonna have their, their industry representatives sitting right in this little area, and they're gonna kill a turkey during that hunt because they cannot stay away from a burn. We'll hang a camera at the intersection of these roads, and I bet you, if not this afternoon, tomorrow morning, there's gonna be turkeys walking up and down this road, getting out here and pecking in this burn. We had a very productive weekend. It's opening weekend of the youth turkey season. Went Saturday afternoon, had a great hunt for William's first hunt. It was kind of tough, y'all, when you get two gobblers in there and the decoys and then the four jakes behind them. It was tough for him to get a good shot. We were proud of him for not taking a marginal shot. It was a clean miss. We went this morning, had a good hunt, and got a little burning done. Now we're going to set the camera up right here. This is where we burn. And we've got about five more hours before dark and we're going to see if we can make it happen this afternoon. But whether you're talking about native warm season grasses in the Midwest or pine plantations down here in the South, 
when it comes to producing quality wildlife habitat, it's hard to beat a good prescribed fire. You need.